Hello, I am David Zanone, a technical marketing engineer here at Infoblox. And today we are here to talk about the Infoblox and Qualys integration. First, we will see an overview of the Infoblox integration with Qualys. Then, we will explain and demonstrate two use cases for this integration. After that, we will see an overview of how to configure the integration along with a brief walkthrough of how to set everything up. Finally, to finish, we will examine the benefits of this integration and conclude with a short review. Now let's look at an overview of the integration. When properly configured, Infoblox and Qualys allows for increased visibility into your network, allowing you to keep tabs on new devices as they join your network. This integration also empowers your team's ability to remediate and respond to security threats. By integrating Qualys with Infoblox, you and your team will save valuable time and improve the ROI of both products. Now let us look at the first use case for this video, Asset Management. First, an Infoblox admin creates a new host record on the Infoblox grid. The new host record triggers the Infoblox outbound API notifying the endpoint with detailed information on the event. Then, the endpoint prompts Qualys to add a new asset to an asset group. Along with the creation of this new asset, Qualys is also prompted to begin a scan on this device. Qualys then performs the actions as instructed by the Infoblox outbound API. Finally, the new asset and scan are visible on the Qualys Guard website. Let's look at this use case in a live environment. First, let's start by adding a new host on our Infoblox grid. Let's give the new host the name My Host. By clicking Next, we can see all of the relevant extensible attributes that have been inherited by this object. Let's specify what Qualys asset group we would like to add this host to. This can be done by inheritance, or we can specify the group we'd like for this host to be added to. For this demo, we will call this group Asset Group for My Host. Now let's confirm the creation of the host by clicking Save and Close. After waiting a moment, let's refresh the page and view the host. Note the two extensible attributes that have been populated with data. Qualys sync time shows when the device was synced with Qualys. Qualys last scan time shows when the device was last scanned by Qualys. On the Qualys Guard website, let's view our list of assets. Here you can see our custom group, Asset Group for My Host. This was created by Infoblox for this host. As mentioned previously, the addition of this host will also prompt a scan to begin. Let's view that scan. As we can see, the scan is currently running. Once the scan has completed, let's view the results. Thanks to Infoblox and Qualys, we now have more information on this device that was just added to our network. Now let's take a look at our second use case for this video, a security event. First, a user will attempt to access a malicious website. This attempt will prompt an RPZ rule to be triggered. This RPZ event causes the Infoblox outbound API to notify the endpoint with detailed information on the event. The endpoint prompts Qualys to scan the device that has made this malicious request. Qualys then performs the actions as instructed by the Infoblox API. Finally, the scan and information regarding the event is visible on the Qualys Guard website. Let's see this use case in a live environment. First, let's make a malicious query. We will emulate this event by running a dig on the website example.com. This device is configured to send all DNS traffic to our Infoblox grid. In the results of this query, we can see that our grid has been configured to block this query and return an NX domain. We can also see that the RPZ rule local.rpz has been triggered. Now let's see the action taken by the Infoblox grid. First, let's take a look at the host that has made this malicious query. The host that has made this query 
was a Windows 10 device at the IP address 10.61.0.5. By selecting this IP and scrolling down, we can see the extensible attribute Quali's last scan time that shows that this device was recently involved in an event that prompted a scan from Quali's. Now let's observe the action taken by Qualys. Under Scans, we can see that the specified RPZ rule involving our device has prompted a scan. After waiting a moment, we will be able to review the results of the scan. Thanks to Infoblox and Qualys, we now have more insight on this device. Now let's walk through the configuration of this integration. First, go to community.infoblox.com and download the required templates for this integration. Then, configure an API user on Qualys. Finally, prepare the Infoblox grid for the integration by adding extensible attributes, uploading templates, configuring a REST API endpoint, and creating notifications. Please note that in order to fully use the Infoblox and Qualys integration, you must purchase and install the Infoblox ecosystem grid-wide license. Now let's briefly view the configuration of the Infoblox and Qualys integration. First, let's create an API user on Qualys. This can be done by navigating to Users, then Users. Then by clicking New and User. Fill out all relevant fields. Ensure that you or an associate has access to the email address provided, as this will be required to finalize the creation of this account. Finally, click User Role. Select the User Role Manager. Please note that for the full functionality of the integration, the user account manager must be selected. After selecting the user role, deselect GUI if desired. Finally, click Save. An email with further instructions on how to finalize the creation of the account will be sent to the email provided in the General Information panel. Please follow the instructions included in that email before continuing. Now on the Infoblox grid, Let's view the extensible attributes that are required for this integration. These can be viewed by navigating to Administration, then Extensible Attributes. All extensible attributes that begin with Qualys are used in this integration. Qualys Asset PC defines if an asset should be created in the Qualys Policy Compliance Module. Qualys Asset VM defines if an asset should be created in the Qualys Vulnerability Management Module. Qualys Asset Group defines which Qualys asset group the network object belongs to. If the group does not exist, it will be automatically generated by Infoblox. Qualys Last Scan Time defines if an asset should be added to Qualys. Qualys Scan defines if an object should be scanned as a response to a security event. Qualys Scan on Add defines if an object should be scanned when it is added to Qualys. Qualys Scan option defines the Qualys Scan option profile to be used. Qualys Scanner defines what Qualys Scanner appliance will be used. Qualys Sync Time is an internal attribute. This provides the time when an object was synced with Qualys. Qualys User SNMP this is an attribute that holds the SNMP credentials to be used to scan an object. Qualys User Unix. This is an attribute that holds the Unix credentials to be used to scan an object. Please note that these extensible attributes are case sensitive and should be created as specified in the Infoblox and Qualys deployment guide. Next, let's cover how to add a template. Once you have downloaded the templates required for this integration, you can begin adding them to NIOS. On the Templates page of the NIOS web interface, click Add. Then, click Select. Locate the templates you would like to upload. Confirm the selection. Then, click Upload. Finally, click Add and close the window.
Repeat these steps until all required templates have been uploaded. After you've uploaded the templates, you can view the parameters of a template by clicking Edit. Shown here are the parameters of the template Quali's assets. If desired, small edits can be made to the template via clicking on Contents and making modifications via the simple text editor. Additionally, content here can be copied and pasted into your favorite code editor. All templates are in a JSON format and can be triggered by specific events defined by notifications. Now let's view the outbound endpoint. Note the text fields auth username and auth password. These credentials correspond to Equali's API account, similar to the one that was made earlier in this video. Also note the WAPI integration username and WAPI integration password text fields. These credentials correspond to a NIOS account that has permissions to make WAPI calls and modify specific objects as required by the integration. For more information on what permissions are required, please view the Infoblox and Quali's integration deployment guide. Now let's view the session management settings. The listed template delivers session information to Quali's when an API call is made. Note the log level has been set to debug. This setting can assist with the troubleshooting of templates and or the outbound endpoint if issues arise. Please note that this setting should not be used in a production environment, as it may impact performance. Once the integration has been fully deployed and is in working order, it is suggested to change the setting to warning or error. If you ever need to view these logs, they can be accessed by clicking View Debug Log. Finally, let's view the notifications that specify what events trigger the outbound endpoint. Notifications act as a link between templates, events, and the outbound endpoint. Shown is the configuration of the notification Quali's RPZ. This notification prompts the template Quali's security to trigger a vulnerability scan from Quali's when the specified RPZ event occurs. For ADP and RPZ events, it is highly recommended to turn on Event Deduplication to prevent multiple calls occurring for the same query. Now let's review the benefits of this integration. Together, Infoblox and Qualys offer fantastic benefits to network teams. First, Qualys and Infoblox increases your network visibility by prompting vulnerability scans as devices join your network. Second, scans are prompted whenever a security event occurs. This effectively empowers remediation and response. Finally, Infoblox and Qualys together can improve the ROI of both products via time-saving benefits. Now, let's recap what was covered in this video. We showcase the power of this integration by demonstrating the ability to scan devices whenever a new device is added, or when a security event occurs. We also briefly went over how to configure the integration. And to finish everything up, we covered the benefits of this integration. Thank you for your time viewing this video. All documentation regarding the Infoblox and Qualys integration is located on the Infoblox community website located at community.infoblox.com. If you have any other concerns, questions, or comments, you can find myself or other Infoblox experts at the Infoblox community website.